Hey there here, so welcome to the VRTech channel. So out of nowhere, Valve released their first app for the MetaQuest 2, MetaQuest Pro and the MetaQuest 3. Yeah, Valve, and uh, it's kind of good. The app is now on the MetaQuest store and it's called Steam Link. And with that, you're gonna be able to actually play your Steam VR games or your just Steam games in general, streaming them wireless to your VR headset. So in this video, I'm gonna see how it works together. I even took some True Lenses shots so we can see it a bit better in details. And yeah, let's see the pros and cons of this app. At the end of the day, it's not the first one doing wireless streaming. And I want also to give you some tips and fixes if your audio is not working like it was happening to me or to enhance your visual experience. Let's get into it. All right, here we are. To start, I have to say that I was very impressed right away by the mere fact that Valve released an app on the Meta Store and the Meta actually let them release this kind of app on the Meta Store because I consider this app like a Trojan horse for the Steam VR library and the Steam VR store, because at the end of the day, it's gonna be super easy to get in, start Steam VR, and start to browse for games over there instead of the Meta Store. But let's go back a bit to understand what this app is all about. Well, at the end of the day, you're gonna be able to go to the store, download the Steam link. With that, you're gonna find an interface that is very, very similar to the one that you have on Steam Link if you use it on your phone or on other PCs, where you're actually able to stream your games residing on your own PC in the other device that can be your phone or in this case, well, your virtual reality headset. All you need to make it work is to be on the same network. That's very important and kind of a downside as well of this application. Also to enable remote play on your main PC, because if it's not enabled, of course, you're not gonna be able to use Steam Link. So if it's not working for you, check it out in the Steam settings. And at the point opening the app, you have to click on your PC, enter a little pin that is gonna appear on your PC. That's where the pass through comes very handy. And yeah, that's it, you're in. Steam VR is gonna start automatically on your headset and you're able to play your Steam VR games wirelessly without any problem. And that's the first big difference between Steam Link and Oculus Link, is that you're gonna start on Steam VR directly, it's gonna open automatically instead of going through the very old and never updated anymore Oculus software, and then to go on Steam VR and stuff like that. Bear in mind that here comes the other downside, is that you're not gonna be able to start your Oculus game through Steam Link, but just your Steam VR games. Unless you use Revive, but that's a very convoluted thing that I don't recommend that you to do. Just use Link at that point. Oh, by the way, a little trick if you wanna have it ready every time, you can just click on the Steam Link over here and pin it to the universal menu. So it's gonna be in a very handy position all the time. I actually tested this on the Quest 2, on the Quest Pro, and on the Quest 3 to have an idea of how it works in different headsets. And I have to say that actually it works very, very well on the Quest Pro and a bit less on the Quest 3. And I'm gonna explain why in a second. So far enough for the first time, I was actually very impressed with the clarity and the very little color bending. Uh, of course, I was in the Steam VR home, so there's not many colors to see, uh, but it was a very good experience. Then the weird thing with the Quest 3 is that you actually have good lenses, so you start to look around a bit. And you notice right away that the resolution on this size is actually very, very low, because this application makes a very big use of foveat rendering. So the part in the middle is gonna be a full resolution or even more kind of a super sampling. It was very, very clear, so it's very nice. But on this side, the resolution drops quite a bit. Now it's something you can change in the settings because SteamVR is now a new toggle called Steam Link. And there you're gonna have an option for encoded video sites. Clicking on manual, you can go on the maximum that is 1344. And it's for sure recommended to have less of a full other rendering effect. The first part is actually the bitrate. You can keep it on auto without any problems, but if you wanna push it as much as possible, well, go for it, crank it till the end. You also have the option to change the refresh rate on the fly. And by the way, every setting can be changed on the fly without having to restart Steam VR 
or the app itself that it's very, very neat. So if you wanna test things where you can do it or if your PC is starting to struggle, you can bring down the bitrate without any problem. And that's a big advantage over Oculus Link, for example. And overall, having more control on the options is very good. But the cool thing is that you don't actually need to. The automatic options are pretty okay. By the way, about the fix for the rendering on the Quest 2 is actually completely fine because Anyway, you have less clarity on the side, so you don't actually notice it that much. On the Quest 3, is more noticeable because you have better lenses and uh, that's why. Also, because we are in the settings, if you actually have the MetaQuest Pro, this app is very cool because it's gonna translate the eye tracking and the face tracking directly to PC VR. And at the same time, the full VR rendering is gonna be a known issue on the Quest Pro because it's gonna follow the movement of your eyes and uh, well, it's gonna look better no matter where you're looking at in the lenses because yeah that's a perk of the eye tracking overall though the quality is pretty good looking at it through the lenses is very comparable to actually link connection with the cable that i think that is still the best to have right now in terms of clarity at least you can see a bit of more artifacts with the steam link compared to the regular link also because with link you can push the bitrate even further than what you can with the steam link and i think that you can actually see it a bit in this shot with the letters where they're a bit more visible with oculus link than with steam link also a big thing talking about wireless streaming is of course the latency there's actually a new counter of latency in the steam vr overlay but i think that it's completely wrong because it shows like 8 milliseconds to 12 milliseconds max and uh, it's not really what I'm seeing. I actually feel a bit more latency than what I had on Oculus Link or Virtual Desktop. But yeah, the numbers are weird. I don't have any way to actually test it myself. So just as a feeling, you gotta have to believe me, I guess. The controller tracking for sure is a bit more rubbery effect. Uh, with Steam Link and it's very very noticeable actually with the MetaQuest Pro so I think there's something that they have to fix over there to have a better support of all the different headsets. But of course I'm mostly talking about the comparison between Oculus Link and Steam Link uh, we have to talk about the elephant in the room that is a uh, viral desktop. VD has been my favorite application to actually stream PC VR games on the MetaQuest. And I have to say that it still remains the best to actually stream in terms of quality. We have better codecs like AV1 on the MetaQuest 3. And well, as less latency, as a better settings all around for bitrate and encoding as a Snapdragon super resolution as well. It has space warp integrated in the app and not relying on the PC. But yeah, overall, I actually like very much Steam Link because of the ease to use. You don't have to go through any menu or any particular walk around to make everything work. You just click on it and you're already on Steam VR and you can play your games that you have on Steam VR. There's something that we didn't have till now. We always had more convoluted mechanics. And with the new theater mode, it's actually very cool to play also just flat games with a quest tree from your PC in this new environment with all the lights from the screen itself. The downside there though, it doesn't support pass-through. By the way, I tried also on the Steam Deck because I wanted to see if I could play just flat games from the Steam Deck on my quest. And uh, yeah, it doesn't work. First of all, it needs a wire connection for the ethernet to your router and it needs the PC to be a VR ready PC. So powerful enough and the Steam Deck is not enough for VR applications. I mean, there's a workarounds, but it's not a good experience. So what's the conclusion? Should you ditch completely Oculus Link? Should you ditch completely VD? Well, no, if you want the best experience for the best streaming, now VD is still the best, it has the best quality. So if you bought that or if you're planning to buy it, it's still a great buy. Steam Link is just amazing if you always use Steam VR games. It's just so ready and so easy to use. Oculus Link is great if you use the Oculus games that are very few and little and with very few releases lately, unfortunately. But yeah, even Link has a bit better quality. So did they do a good job at Valve with this application? Well, I'll say so. I can wait to see improvements, maybe the ability to change the codec, maybe the ability to have even a higher. Uh, with the bitrate, it will be very, very good. But so far, for the first iteration, it's very good. And the base is that it works very well and it's very very easy and i think i'm gonna keep it in the dock in my quest for quite a while it's just immediate it feels more native than 
the meta solution for some reason. So yeah, good job there. Oh, by the way, if you had a problem with the audio, uh, the fix will be to actually switch a lot between manual and headset in the audio settings. I think there's a bug right now on Steam Link because for me it wasn't working. And then I had to select the actual microphone as a speaker in the audio settings on Windows and then switching between the two, well, I was able to get the audio working and I didn't touch it anymore because every time I touch it, it disappears. So I'm pretty sure it's a bug, maybe some problem with drivers already installed in some computers. I saw online, there's a lot of problems about it. But anyway, guys, that was all. I hope you enjoyed it. I was actually working on the Pico 4 through the lenses. It's almost ready, uh, but then this thing came out and I wanted to cover it, so... Here we are. We're gonna see the through the lenses in the next video. So stay tuned. Um, as always, if you like the video, like. If you didn't like it, please do like. Subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you're new to the channel, join the button there. Let on further also the Patreon. Thanks all the Patreons to join the channel, of course. See you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.